Hey, I haven't made a video in so long because I've been so burned out with, you know, the downfall of capitalism and everything. I have not forgotten about you. I will keep making videos. And thank you to those of you that are still around and those of you that are new to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. And I want to make today's video about how to deal with artist burnout. Not only is it hard to get through regular burnout, but what if you burn out and the things that you love? In a way, I feel like this is a weird video to make because like, we all kind of know what to do when we're burned out. You're supposed to get back to your routine, eat good food, get a lot of rest, do exercise, eventually get back to your hobbies, your, your job. But that's not what I want this video to be about because like I said, we already kind of know that we're supposed to be getting back to those things. Like, that's exactly the problem. Like, under capitalism, all that we're supposed to do is figure out how to be productive. And should you ever get off track, figure out as quickly as you can how to get back to being productive. Even if our bodies and our minds are given out. So I'm not saying those things don't work. I'm just saying, I want to share with you something different that I learned during these past months that I, you know, wasn't doing anything. I think the biggest lesson I learned from being burnt out was that how important it is to experience your feelings and I know it's gonna sound kind of like weird and out of left field but feeling your emotions I feel is incompatible with capitalism therefore one of the most powerful actions we can all take is learn how to be in touch with our own feelings and emotions I would like to share with you how to deal with your artist burnout by getting in touch with your emotions It has literally taken me years to understand how to feel my emotions because for a long time I kept trying to put words to my emotions like I feel sad, I feel frustrated and feeling is actually has very little to do with language it's like literally feeling the physical sensations in your body a lot of the times they're uncomfortable like do you feel a knot in your stomach? Do you feel like a tingly feeling in your arms? Sometimes I feel like there's something like blocking my throat or like it's closed up or something. Literally, what physical sensations are you experiencing throughout life? During this time, I really couldn't help but notice like every solution that capitalism offers us is a distraction towards our emotions. Whether we're offered drugs, illegal or not, sex, entertainment no matter what emotion you're feeling there's a never-ending stimulus stimuli that you could go towards to get rid of your boredom your pain your frustration anything even the things that people consider the highest pursuits like prayer meditation most people teach us those things as a way to not deal with our emotions i learned to oh i'm feeling an uncomfortable emotion let me breathe and count my breaths and get to a level of like normal or more comfortable feelings but never dealing with your own comfortable emotions or just your physical sensations whether that was intentional or not that's what i learned and it makes sense because like how could you get back to your sending your little emails on january 6th if the whole entire world wasn't set up to get you to not feel and deal with your emotions how would we consume mindlessly for our entire lives if we aren't running away from our emotions? The entire system will likely collapse if we all stop to acknowledge how we feel because it makes no sense to continue doing so. Thankfully, little by little, the younger generations are starting to do these things. They are starting to heal their trauma, feel their emotions, and question the system. However, after everything that's happened in the past three years, it's only normal that a large part of the population is burned out. We went through a coup, we went through a global pandemic, a Chernobyl in Ohio, basically, UFOs, Karens, and of course, capitalism. We should have kept going through this whole thing like nothing's going on. It's normal that so many of us are burnt out because we understand somewhere in us that we are on the brink of a new era and that the current system does not work which is why we need to find a new way of living that doesn't just emphasize productivity and what better time to find a new way of living than when you're actually working on putting yourself back together
So the most frustrating part to me about figuring out how to deal with artist burnout was because I got here because I was trying so hard at the things that I love the most. Not because we're lazy or because we don't try hard enough, it's like the opposite. <laughs> you tried so hard, you took yourself to the limit of what you can do mentally and physically. And what, at least for me, was super frustrating is that it's kind of out of your control. It, like you hit a wall, you tried so hard and now you can't try at all. So for me, the first step in dealing with your artist burnout is literally to just surrender. For most of 2022, I had to examine my relationship with art, which for me involves YouTube. And on top of that, I was dealing with a hand injury because I was working on my graphics. And well, it turns out I grasp the pencil or whatever I write with too hard. When I finished my graphic, I actually it actually was so uncomfortable just to open up my hand. So I feel like I hit a wall on many levels and like I had no choice but just stop. Eventually, I just realized I have to honor my need for rest and to really look back at the past two years and realize how I got there. And how I got here was I worked on my YouTube channel for two years nonstop. When COVID shut everything down and I actually started working from home for my office job, I was like, great, I'm not gonna waste any more time commuting to work. Let me put all of that time to towards YouTube, which is what I had always wanted. But I'm laughing because it's like I dug my own grave. If I had just paid attention to how I'm feeling throughout that experience, maybe I would have given myself more rest or I would have given myself more fun or whatever I needed in the moment and I wouldn't have hit a wall in 2022. Something I absolutely hate about capitalism is like it makes you feel ashamed that you're not a robot and that you have needs. You can't make mistakes, you can't have a time out to take care of your mental health. God forbid you have like issues with, you know, it just in your life in general. Like you should be a robot, like you shouldn't have any problems, you shouldn't have any pain, you shouldn't get tired. Because honestly for so long I felt like really bad about my YouTube channel and the fact that like, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired from working 40 hours a week and I can't get home every day and make a video every goddamn week like YouTube would like me to would like me to do which is why when covid shut everything down i kind of was like i'm gonna go hardcore at youtube but in the past months i learned to honestly just have compassion for myself and just understand that i'm not a content farm i can't make a video every day let alone every week or every month i'm just one person like doing their best and that should be enough that's the crazy thing i had to learn honestly that i am enough and you are enough with everything that you're doing in your life and have compassion that like your best right now doesn't look like somebody else's best effort and also that like some arbitrary techno lord in saying that one video a week is what you need to do has very little to do with like you being able to actually do that and that being safe for your mental physical health so many of us have been brainwashed to think like we're only worthy when we're being productive when we're achieving some goal when we're attaining success some type of result that can be quantified whether this was through school media religion just capitalism in general we've all been taught to believe that we're equal to our achievements that, that that's our self-worth in this video i really want to encourage you to pause and learn to have compassion for the seasons in your life which are slower like even earth can produce 24 7. earth has autumn and winter and so should you like it's okay to have compassion for yourself and accept that you need to slow down, you need to do less. Maybe you're healing, maybe you're growing, and that sometimes, yeah, it's uncomfortable when you're going through those periods in your life. And it's hard, especially when you look around and you feel like some other people, they're not feeling this negative, frustrating emotions that you're going through. And how can they be doing okay with everything that's going on and you're not? And if you're feeling that way, I want to encourage you to actually just talk to yourself. Like, I spent so much of last year just telling myself, it's okay to take a break. It's okay to slow down. I'm giving myself permission to slow down right now and take a break. I'm letting myself rest right now. Because literally, most of us have likely spent our entire lives hearing the opposite. 
and if nobody outside of you is gonna come and tell you those things you just need to be the one that tells yourself those things and i've said this on my videos before you have inherent worth because you were born and you're a human being period not because you're producing things for others or for money In learning how to deal with my artist burnout, eventually I came to a point where I really had to identify where the source of most frustration was coming from in my practice. And for me, it was like a really weird thing because YouTube has always been like a healing, cathartic experience for me. But like I mentioned, when COVID shut everything down, I became very like robotic about making YouTube videos. And my intention initially was I want to have discipline, be on a schedule, I want to have a routine. But what I didn't understand is that in having that routine, I wasn't giving myself time to rest. And at the time, I was making marks and chill. I feel like really good about those videos. I'm proud of myself. But I felt like I put myself almost like on an assembly line. On Monday, I do this. On Tuesday, I do this. On Wednesday, I do this. And maybe that type of working is not for me. Especially because if you look at my videos other than marks and chill, they're always like slightly different. I'm always talking about different subjects. And because I was working on this series and I very much knew like what I'm gonna talk about every every video, I basically tried to be as sufficient as possible, but all the joy was gone eventually in making those videos. I don't have the ability to make those videos all the time. Like not all by myself and that's okay. But what I realized is that the whole reason why I like YouTube in general is because it's fun and when the process was no longer fun for me it was just exhausting it was like it was just a chore and it took the joy out of my practice for me and so I would encourage you to just really examine where you're finding the most frustration because it's hard when you're so emotionally invested in something that you're doing like a hobby and to then feel burnt out because you did it so much, it's kind of weird and frustrating. So really take the time, take a step back, even if it feels scary. Because at one point I was like, you know what, maybe I don't even want to make YouTube videos ever again. And for a while I actually felt that, like I was considering never making a video again. But when I actually examined everything, I realized I had become one of those channels that I don't like to watch, make the same video every time like you know the format it's gonna be you already know what's gonna happen by the end of the video from the beginning of the video even if my videos are not like groundbreaking i don't want my videos to be like a routine i want to have like original somewhat original ideas as much as possible and actually enjoy the process so really figure out like which part of your hobby or your practice is giving you frustration before you throw it all away because if it was your hobby for so long and you did it so much, there must be a reason why it was in your life and why you enjoyed it so much. So instead of just robbing yourself of the experience in the future, really try to be as unbiased as possible looking back and try to understand what you did wrong or how you went about it. And maybe you can change, tweak certain things to make you have like a more enjoyable experience. If you're currently trying to figure out how to deal with artist burnout, I would encourage you to just start experimenting and so that you can find joy in creating again. Maybe you can find what is missing from your current practice or what you no longer like about it. For me, oddly enough, TikTok helped me fall in love with making videos again. Because my account was new on TikTok, I really gave myself permission to just do whatever I wanted. We're calling this segment this is more Imagining the Ideal Homes for My Paintings. And not care so much about the final product. Like for me, YouTube is like, I try my best at YouTube. I see TikTok more as like a sketchbook now where I just throw ideas, make weird videos. I realized that I had stopped doing that in my videos on YouTube. I really realized during this time of experimenting that for me the reason I started painting and continued is because it was like a meditative experience, calming, healing and that's what I want to give my audience. I want to give you like a calm, healing, empowering experience 
and I realized that I have been doing it all wrong because in the past I always felt like I was at a disadvantage because my personality is not like that loud when it comes to YouTube like oddly enough I feel like I'm more <laughs> I'm louder in everyday life than when it comes to YouTube because when it comes to YouTube I have like an idea that I want to share and I get really focused and I my voice even gets quieter so I just always felt like I'm at a disadvantage compared to like youtubers that have a loud personality and people like to watch them I felt like how can I keep you not bored how can I compete with that and now I realize like I never have to compete with that if what I get out of art is that it's a meditative calming healing experience and that's what I want to share with you and I don't need to worry about like being loud and I feel like that might sound dumb because it's like duh but I really didn't realize that like I had that contradiction in my head and so which is why moving forward I'm really gonna try to do like slower editing for my videos and I'm also gonna try to do more like almost ASMR type of footage <laughs> I'm not sure if like fully ASMR but like just focusing more on giving you that healing calming experience through my editing, through my sounds, not trying to rush, not trying to compete with people that are loud and fast paced because like that's the complete opposite of why I enjoy this experience and what I want to give you and like people always, I feel like people have a hard time like with abstract art because they're like what does it mean, what does it mean and it's like for me it's not about what it means, it's about the experience, it's a peaceful, calming experience and so that's what I'm gonna try to give you from now on and like I said, I know it might sound dumb that I'm just now figuring that out <laughs> but maybe that's why it's good sometimes to take a pause from your art or your hobby because you come back with like a new perspective and like I said, everything in nature even requires rest so don't be afraid to take a, to take a pause in your practice because you'll come back way better so in conclusion, while you're trying to figure out how to deal with artist burnout I want to just recommend that you just follow your heart that you really start to pay attention to how you're feeling what makes you happy, what's frustrating there's literally no right or wrong way to recuperate from all the hard work that you've been doing and of course, we obviously all have to do this to the best ability while we have to figure out how to pay the rent and go to work every day which is why it's that much more important that we actually build a practice that is sustainable for the long term especially when you hit a point in your hobby where you like get really focused and you know you're really good but like you have to dedicate the time to being better it becomes like a lot about the end result, the end result, the end result but like the process still has to remain like nourishing for us because that's the way, that's the reason we went into it in the first place so like I said, during this process don't be afraid to actually feel all those weird, uncomfortable, frustrating emotions that come with being burned out I honestly feel like if the majority of people learn how to feel their emotions and really practice that in their everyday lives like we would make the entire society change maybe not tomorrow but eventually if enough people do it the current system could not survive <laughs> and in figuring out how to deal with my artist burnout I decided this year I'm gonna have compassion for myself and take things a little bit more slow than usual and I'm gonna commit to making four videos this year and that's my goal well, let me clarify, that's one of my goals because <laughs> I also want to make affordable art prints, I want to make stickers, I want to like finish my website which I've been working on for a while <laughs> uh, I just have so many things that I want to do but like I was mentioning to you, if I focus on creating an art practice that is sustainable maybe I can create an art practice that l lasts a long time as opposed to just crashing and burning because I try to make one video a week <laughs> Um, which is like really hard by the way I don't know who came up with that statistic whatever, whatever but anyway, and I also want to make like videos that are good for you 
if you want to stay in touch with me in the short term like i do post more videos on tiktok just not as good as the ones i post on here like i said <laughs> but yeah anyway thank you so much for watching if you still are subscribe if you like to continue talking about world domination and i will see you in my next one bye